I never thought I would be sitting here talking about how good a can of sardines was. It's the flaming Peking Duck. I'm drunk. This is the best restaurant in financial district. Oh. Wow. A flaming Peking duck, ube longanisa burger, fancy Lao and vibey Thai food. This is the trendy Asian food scene out in New York City. Always creating, always innovating, always showing you something you've never seen before. Hit that like button and let's go. Everybody, we are outside of the newest Filipino fast casual restaurant out in the Lower East Side, man. This is a really hip neighborhood on Broom Street. About to check out what they got. Let's go. Uh, wh what are we looking at here? So these are the cheese arancinis. Mmm. Whoa! These are the pork longanisa ube slider. Wow, ube bread. And these are the ube pao. Wow, ube pao. Super soft. And we have the chicken wings in a sauce. So these are the pork barbecue skewers. It is marinated in banana ketchup, soy sauce, and garlic. What you're looking at is two things. One, you're looking at some very dope Filipino art that is actually on sale. And you are also looking at the first ube breaded longanisa slider. I have never seen this before, man. This is just all the traditional Filipino flavors into one bite actually between the longanisa and the ube bread because I've never really seen an ube bun before and I thought that was really creative. I mean, that's what they want to do here at Kolya is just combine and just really show people all the traditional Filipino flavors in like a very like common format, you know, a more like accessible format that everybody's familiar with. All right, here you got your chicken wings. It looks like a, a bunch of buffalo wings. This has indusol sauce and that's what makes it different, man. A little sour kick, but spice. There's sweetness in there. Okay, and here we have their version of an arancini ball. Guys, oh, this is a Filipino arancini. Never seen that before. Tons of cheese, tons of pesto. Not good. All right, here you got your pork barbecue scores, man. I've had these at all different levels. I've had them at Dollar Hits over in LA, which we just grilled ourselves right in front of the restaurant. And then, you know, you can go to all different types of levels of spots. Oh, this is some of the best pickled vegetables I've had. For dessert, last but not least, we got the ube pao, um, obviously inspired by the pao, and it's super soft and super sweet. It's dripping with like coconut syrup. Look at the inside. Guys, there's not a lot of buns that are this soft. That ube pao is melting in my mouth. What I think is cool about Kalye is that this is like the next level of fusion where it's actually done by people like from Asia, from the Philippines, but they are weaving in different formats and, and different ways of doing things. And what they're able to do is actually deliver a lot of that like authentic Filipino flavor, except just in a different format. Mabuhay! Come to Kalye. All right, you guys, next up on brand new Asian concepts here in New York City, we got shishado peppers, pepperoni, and sausage here at Kid Brother. The Italians come out of me. We got the sausage and peppers on a pizza. Doesn't get better than that. Oh come my on. goodness. How the sausage pep, but then the shishados. The shishado is such a unique flavor. Uh, I'll be honest, it really amplifies uh, the slice because you know, you got your pepperoni, you got your sausage. We're, we're used to eating that. Then you're doing the shishado peppers. <laughs> this is amazing. All right, guys, our next new Asian concept in New York City has the one and only hard to find flaming Peking duck. We're here at Woosh in the financial district. Let's go check it out. Look at my little duck hanging out there in the closet by himself, about to get eaten. All right, I'm here with the owner, Kevin. Uh, first of all, how do you say the name? Is it Woosh? Um, it's a wish. It's wish. a golden wish. Oh, golden wish. Awesome. What type of uh, Chinese food would you say that you guys serve here? Uh, we're selling like new fashion fusion, Chinese fusion. Okay. What What do you hope to bring that's new to the New York Chinese food landscape? Um, I hope to you know have people have American people to try our like southern Chinese food. Okay. Hold up. Oh. Oh. That is the flaming Peking duck. Ooh. 
All right, you guys, we are looking at a feast here at Golden Wish. This is the Flaming Peking Duck. The reason they put the alcohol on the duck and light it on fire is to make sure that it's extra, you know, additionally crispy right before it reaches your plate. Um, this is obviously not our first time having Peking Duck, but I'm glad to see that it's more ubiquitous around New York, because you used to only be able to find it like one, two spots. I think you might be able to find it like 20 spots now. And this Peking Duck, is a little bit different because it's kind of a little bit like the Cantonese suat, which is the roast duck. So it's spiced more like that, but it's cooked like Peking duck. So the skin is super crispy. Yeah, he said that this is Southern Chinese style Peking duck. Mmm. I definitely taste more, almost like maybe star anise, a little bit more than you would on like a Northern Peking duck. The best Peking duck in New York right now. If you like Peking duck, you need to come to Golden Wish. If you guys know anything about Chinese restaurants in 2022, Andrew, and we are at a new one, they're way more pan-Asian, but still like in an authentic way, right? You know, they're like incorporating some Western Chinese dishes. For example, the yang pai. This is almost like a Xinjiang, more like Xi'an dish. Of course, we got some fried shrimp right here. This is gonna be from a more coastal region. I love that you can come to a spot, get Peking duck, get some Southern Cantonese, Hong Kong style dishes, and also get a really good lamb uh, rib. Man, spiced up, nice with the cumin and everything. Mm. <clears throat> Andrew, I'm not gonna lie, this really reminds me of like a Hong Kong hotel's sort of like, uh, you know, the restaurant. Oh yeah, but elevated version for 2022, man. This is uh, barbecue pork. Mmm. I got to say, this was fascinating because there was actually some elements of it being like Western pork. Mm. Except it does have a gurung chong ginger scallion sauce on top. So it's not quite chashu. It's not as sweet. It doesn't have that red candy flavor, but man, that's delicious. No, th that's, Andrew, that's you, most pork. people eat gurung chong kai, which is like uh, ginger scallion chicken. This was gurung chong juyo pork. All right, guys, here we have another one of their premier items. This is the steamed Chilean sea bass. Oh my goodness. Guys, and if you know anything about Cantonese cooking in particular, they love steamed fish. This is what I grew up on, man. Not exactly Chilean sea bass, David. We weren't eating that at home. We were eating more salmon and uh, other fish, but yes. Oh my God. Listen, guys, I'm telling you, every dish here has been high quality. I was really impressed. You know, sometimes when you go to these spots in a neighborhood like Fida, you don't know what to expect. Andrew, is it, does it have the Guaylo menu with the orange chicken? <laughs> Let me or tell you this, David, so authentic? With these mushrooms, this special mushroom, this is not for the Guaylos. Nah, nah, nah. This is, I've only, the other time I've seen this is when we're eating our uh, mid-autumn fest. This is a special mushroom right here. Probably from the mountains of Yunnan, China. Mm. Ooh, what? That's a fragrant mushroom. That's a magic mushroom. All right, you guys, we're finishing up our meal, but I got to tell you, Andrew, even this like duck bone milk broth that they made was fire. I think the quality is amazing, and this is the best restaurant in the financial district. You know, if you're trying to take a business meeting or whatever, and you want some good Chinese food, you have to come here. Guys, I know what this looks like. Literally, they lit this piece of cinnamon on fire. I'm drunk. This is a sipping Buddha. Ooh, mezcal. I also have sauce on my Switch. It was a good meal. But you guys, there are only two Lao Focus restaurants in all of Manhattan. One of them is Kyo, the other one is Dom. As you can see right here, this is the Kao Niao. This is the sticky rice inside of the bamboo wicker basket. Let's check it out. All right, you guys, I never thought that I would find deep cut Lao dishes here in Manhattan, here in the Ill East Village. Uh, forgive me for the pronunciation. This is Jemaku. This is a uh, pounded eggplant with a little bit of beef. Of course, we've got the raw um, cabbage wrap dip. If you guys know about Lao food, obviously it's very similar to the Isan region of Thailand, which is more Northern Thailand. This is a beef skewer. Mm, that's a beef skewer. It has been charred perfectly. It's hanger steak. That's one of the best ones I've ever had here at Dom, Lao food. When, of course, we got this chicken skewer. I'm telling you guys, it looks hilarious, sort of just the shape. It almost looks like a mini chicken, but man, it looks good. These are some of the best skewers I've ever had in New York City at any spot. And it's here at Dom, the Lao food, Kao Niao.
All right, the last dish we have here is the sardines with tomatoes. This is the quaca pasai maknen. Sorry, I tried to say it, but um, this is Spanish sardines topped with charred tomato sauce. Let's get it. Mmm, it is a can of sardines. Look at that. I'm not gonna lie, that tastes way better than I thought it was going to. I never thought I would be sitting here talking about how good a can of sardines was. Shout out to Dom. We are on fire inside of here at Lao Jia right now, okay? Uh, not only do you have the fire, but you got the fire pot right here, the huo guo. Uh, guys, we're here at Lao Jia. This is one of the premier all-you-can-eat hot pot brands in New York City. And let me tell you this, this originates from Brooklyn, and they still got Brooklyn prices. All-you-can-eat hot pot for $35. And if you want unlimited skewers, it's only $42. That's the deal. All right, guys, as I'm throwing in the food, you'll notice that decor wise, this is actually really meant to be kind of like a 1950s, 1970s, like back alley of Shanghai. Lao Jia literally means old street. Uh, Jeremy Lin and a whole bunch of other celebrities used to go to the, the location in Brooklyn. So, you know, it is a well-known brand. There's a lot of expensive hot pot spots around New York City, but for an all you can eat spot for this price, Lao Jia is delivering some of the best quality, no joke. As much as there is always a space for expensive Chinese hot pot chains from China, I really think it's cool that Lao Jia is from Brooklyn and it really fits in Chinatown because Brooklyn's Chinatown, 8th Ave, Sunset Park, is kind of similar still to Manhattan's Chinatown as far as pricing wise. So it's still a really good deal. It might even fall under potentially a Chinatown cheap eat as far as all you can eat hot pot. Oh, he's good. Onion, cilantro, garlic, uh, chili oil, boom, peanut sauce, you know, sacha, gotta have a lot of sacha. Honestly, as an ABC American born Chinese, this is kind of how we grew up eating hot pot. It was a lot of all you can eat and you know, buffets were a lot bigger of a thing when we were growing up. So it's kind of cool to just come back to a, another all you can eat spot. But as traditional as it is, they do have a lot of like fried chicken wings and French fries here. And you know, to be honest, I do think a lot of people in China do like these kinds of foods too. So to fuse it in with the old school hot pot with the new school kind of fried snacks, it's kind of cool. As cool as it is to also be eating where the Fu or Dai are eating, it's also cool to just be eating where Pang Zai would like to be. <laughs> Pang Zai, you know, being a big hungry Chinese guy. Oh man, we had all the meats. This is beef tongue right here. We had all the veggies, all the fried snacks. I'm telling you, you will not find a better hot pot all you can eat deal in the city, bar none. This is it, Lao Jia. Let's go over and check out the fire. The Chinese special effects here. This is just mist and a light, but it kind of does look like a flame. Oh, wow. All right, you guys, we're at a brand new spot called Mei Wee, representing the cuisine of Southern Thailand. A lot of people don't know so many different cuisines in Southern Thailand. This is a Ya Dong. They said we gotta open up with a shot, you know, take a mango rind. You know, we don't even normally do this, but they're straight from Thailand. I said, hi. Guys, we've got a lot of Todd's here. We've got head Todd, fried mushrooms, shemeji mushrooms. We've got Puet Todd, which is fried taro. I'm gonna dip this. You guys, get the head Todd. Get the head Todd. All right, you guys, this is a Pak more. This is a peanut dumpling with a rice crepe, coconut milk, garlic shavings on top. You guys, somehow they managed to make that peanut on the inside taste like meat. I'm telling you, I've never had this dish before. I'm sure there's some chiu chow influence uh, like many dishes in Thailand have, but this is something completely unique. 
guys, we are looking at a Pad Thai Hor Kai. Of course, Pad Thai is probably the most famous uh, Thai dish in the Western world, but this one has a Southern flair to it. Um, this is how they do things in the south of Thailand, man. They wrap it up in an egg. I'm sure you could get this in other places because, you know, Bangkok's so mixed up. But I'm telling you guys, some of the things they put in here, very, very emblematic of Southern Thai cooking. That is one of the best Pad Thai's I've ever had. Oh! As you can see, guys, they're doing things super Thai. Um, the story behind this spot is that they used to always hang out in their apartment and have people over and they decided to open up a restaurant and have people into their living room and this is like the uh, manifestation of that. These are both lemongrass drinks. Um, they have a lot of Thai ingredients in them. I'm telling you guys, a lot of people try to do what May Re does, but they've really captured the energy here. And shout out to Southern Thailand. All right, you guys, our next new Thai spot, it's chomp, 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 is actually the sound of eating. It's also a compliment in Thailand. That's chomp, chomp, let's go. All right, you guys, we're at chomp, chomp. They are from Bangkok. They serve food from all around Thailand, north, south, central. This particular one comes from central Thailand. This is Masama Nua. And actually, Andrew, it comes from the Indiosphere. So this actually comes more from the Indian influence part of Thailand. As you guys know, Thailand, is uh, a lot of different things. Obviously very, very Southeast Asian, has a lot of Chinese influence, as well as a lot of Indian influence. This is from the Indian side. Masaman curry, nua means meat. I mean, I'm sorry, means beef in Thai. Like we said, guys, they do fuse it with a lot of different things here. The roti, even more Indian. They have French fries. Ooh. I did not expect the wrapping the masama nula inside of the roti was going to make that big of a difference this is a 10 out of 10 bite right here you guys there are so many different thai restaurants and concepts in new york city and they always have something different on the menu um some more than others this happens to have a lot of like uh fusion cool items Another Bangkok Central Thailand dish we have is the Kuei Tio Bed, which is a duck broth soup, and it's very fragrant, man. I can smell, you know, I've had a couple duck broth soups in, in my day, but uh, this one has a lot of smell to it, man. I like it. Very fragrant. I can smell, smell like the five spice, the star anise. Wow, look at the, the rice noodles in there. Super fat. Ooh. Let's try it, man. Let's waste no more time. It definitely does have a little bit of medicinal vibes, mm. but it's a lot more sweeter and a little bit spicier than something like the Malaysian bakate that is tastes very medicinal. So I'd say this cuts the difference, but overall, man, I like this dish a lot. This is a really good bowl of duck noodles, guys. I'm gonna take a look at the roasted duck in this right now. Guys, a lot of Thai spots, they're gonna use the roasted duck uh, like the siu op straight from like the Cantonese spots, but I think they do their duck themselves, man, because this looks a little bit different, so. Mm. I mean, you're probably wondering why we're covering so much Thai food. Well, guess what? There's so many new Thai restaurants opening up. They actually do have a lot of different sides to their cuisine, guys. Obviously, it's more than Pad Thai, Pad Ki Mao, Pad Siu, as we know. Um, and I just love to see the diversity. So I think people are always searching for new Thai dishes. So, man, hopefully they all do well. And our last dish here is the Pad Pong Kare Tale. Man, it's stir fried jumbo squid, fish fillet egg, bell peppers, onions, scallions with a curry sauce. Um, kare obviously meaning curry there. Oh man, this looks actually really good. This looks like more of one of those dishes you will see actually in Thailand. Let me, let me show you the fish fillet. Hey. Fish fillet of the Pad Pong Kare Tale. Mmm, very tender. Squid. Kind of like calamari, it's deep fried. Listen, man, there's nothing wrong with Pad Thai or Pad CU, but it kills me to see you guys still stuck on it. I get it, man, maybe not all restaurants have this dish, but if you come to a restaurant and it has a, a list of specials, which this item is actually on the special side, definitely check them out, man. It's definitely worth the experience and definitely worth the flavor because you're just gonna get dishes that you just never even had before, man, trust me. There's so much dishes of Thailand that are undiscovered or at least unrealized to us. Thank <laughs> you.